Hi everyone, it's the interview queen Alicia Atut here and I am so, so excited to welcome you all to my interview with Tegan Knox. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing okay. I know that the world is super crazy right now. There are a lot of exciting things on the horizon for you. So how have you been coping with everything over there? Um, to be fair, I've just been playing a lot of video games. You know, <laughs> video games are working out has been my life for the past, God, I don't even know how long it's been now. It just feels like forever. Yeah. But yes, I've been handling it quite well. I'm an introvert, so this has kind of been like heaven for me, so I've had to not go anywhere. <laughs> It's funny because people have been asking me too, like, how are you coping? And of course, I miss the traveling. I'm so used to being on the road. But yes. when I come, I'm the same. I'm an introvert. Video games, television, that's all I need. So. Yes, yeah, exactly. People are me picking up new skills. I'm like, I'll get around to it. Right now, I'm playing this game. <laughs> what have been some of the games you've been uh, binge playing? <laughs> <laughs> so I tried playing Animal Crossing again. I really did. But I just couldn't get back into it. So I started playing... Like trying to complete like Red Dead and you know Call of Duty, just trying to backtrack and play all my old games that I know that I enjoy, so I don't have to risk getting a new one. <laughs> I know that another thing you've been doing is watching as an ink master, and you're actually open to being a canvas. I would, I would happily be a canvas on ink master. I got so addicted to the point where on the last season they hadn't put the final up yet, and they still haven't. So it's, it's frustrating me for weeks that I don't know who's won, like, season 14, and I need to know. But just whack me on there. I'll, whatever you want to do, let's get another tattoo. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> goodness. See, I would be absolutely terrified to be a canvas because you know everyone's trying to screw each other over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'd be so frightened. But they are normally, like, pretty good. So it's a yeah. gamble. It's a gamble, girl. Oh, yeah, that's a risk it, you know. It's, it's a story for the grandkids one day. That's what it is. <laughs> True. See like the story. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, what was the fact the first tattoo you actually ever got? So the first one was on the unicorn on my shoulder. Um, it was for my dad. He's in the parachute regiment, um, and that was when I was seventeen, I think. And now it's just skyrocketed up to like twenty-one tattoos. <laughs> oh my god! Just a lot. <laughs> and we're not that- done yet. I was about to ask, is there anything else that you would really still like to get or anything you have your mind set on getting? Yeah, I want to make my left arm into like a sleeve for family and friends because all the tattoos are on there for family and friends. Um, So my favorite one is probably my superhero dinosaur that I've got on my arm because my three-year-old nephew picked that he wanted me to have a superhero superhero dinosaur. Um, So I was like, okay, that's a tattoo I'm getting. So now I'm waiting for the youngest nephew to get old enough to speak so he can tell me what he wants to put on my skin forever. <laughs> and not so regret the decision. <laughs> well, you're, of course, the girl with the shiniest wizard, and you're also a huge Harry Potter fan, obviously. So mm-hmm. when were you either first given that whimsical and awesome nickname, or did you think of it yourself? Um, it was like when I worked for a company in the UK, Someone just, like, one of the commentators shouted out, like, that's got to be the shiniest wizard I've ever seen. And I was like, oh, that sounds like Harry Potter. I just nailed it. There it is. The girl with the shiniest wizard. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just going to take it and run with it. And that's what I've been doing. <laughs> that's amazing how simple it came along. Like, literally just someone saying it. And you're like, bam, taking it. Done. Yeah. yeah, I was like, ah, this this would be a good T-shirt. <laughs> The funniest thing is the same thing happened with me with my like interview queen moniker. A fan used the hashtag, and I was like, "Ooh, that's good!" And now it's like everywhere. <laughs> Gotta get that money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always awesome seeing you kicking butt on WWE NXT. So, how amazing does it feel to you, knowing, especially being a fan of this from such a young age, um, knowing that you are a WWE superstar, and no matter how long you're with the brand, that's gonna go down in the books for forever. It's, it's such a crazy thing to think about because like this is always not only my dream but my grandfather's dream for me to make it to this stage so like knowing that I get to do this every single day is insane but then also be able to do and create like crazy things like the Royal Rumble and takeovers and in your house and Great American Bash last week like it's just such an incredible feeling and it still doesn't feel real like I'm still waiting to wake up and be like 
oh yeah I was just a, that was a good dream that was, that was a good dream but you know it's such an incredible thing and you know everyone that's been here worked so hard um, especially coming from the indies that's my dog saying hello um, is that blue yeah it is yeah she's she's just staring at me trying to trying to join in is what she's trying to do um but yeah no it's, it's a crazy thing it's still so so surreal and getting to learn off like Shawn Michaels and Triple H and Sarah Marta is just like it's so mind-blowing like this shouldn't be a thing a girl from Wales is able to do <laughs> well I can hear the genuine emotion that you're speaking with right now and I also recently saw that uh, so you have to tell me about that emotion how you're feeling when you won your match the four-way and you knew you were able to challenge EO for the WWE NXT Women's title because that's coming up very soon and that is not a tiny match you got coming up no it's, it's quite the challenge um it's uh, again it's not something I ever thought I'd be able to do like if I thought if I ever made it to WWE, it will be like a short stint and that's it. Like I wouldn't be getting championship matches or anything like that. But being able to compete for the NXT Women's Championship and being the first Welsh woman to do it is mind-blowing. Like, and then getting to wrestle Io Shirai, one of the best wrestlers in general, regardless of gender, in the world, in a WWE ring on live TV is crazy. So, so good, but so crazy. And I am popping my pants. So nervous. <laughs> oh, you're gonna be incredible. I'm so excited to watch this match up. Like, I just know it's gonna be an incredible match. So congratulations, that's huge. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, I appreciate that. Of course, and it's been cool to see because you're of course faster and stronger and shinier as ever now. Um, yeah. because because this actually marks the end of a comeback story and the start of an exciting future. So have you always been a badass in the sense uh, where it comes to your determination and how, regardless of what's thrown your way, you're like, yep, yeah, screw it, I'm gonna overcome this hardship? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm, I wouldn't know if it's like, I think it's just stubbornness. I don't wanna quit, I hate doing that. I like to do things by myself. Um, so you just get a little bit more feeling of accomplishment when you do it on your own back um but i'm just i'm ready to start this new story because i'm fed up i've hated every second of being the comeback kid i've hated it like you know things happened and people talk about my knees all the time they try and use my knees against me as if like it's a weakness now but you know i'm ready to show people that it's far from a weakness it's part of my history yeah but that's not all i'm known for i'm known for my hard work and like being able to do things that I want to do. So that's, I'm ready for this comeback story to be done with, in the past, over with, and starting my new stuff. <laughs> well, especially after this match coming up, they're definitely not going to be talking about your knees. So <laughs> I, I, I'm hoping I've proved enough over the past. Like, it's been three years yeah. since this one, two years since the second one. All of those, yeah. let's, just, let's just move on. Let's go for something else. <laughs> Well, moving on, I discovered that we actually have something in common, and that is how we absolutely love Paramore. Like, we love them. So, oh. is Haley Williams one of your favorite artists ever? Because for me, oh. I just, I want to be her. Yeah, I, I want her to adopt me. Just be my mother. It'd be weird. Right. Just be my mother. Just be related to me in some way. Oh, and I was so sad when I when she canceled her, her gigs and that. Because you had tickets. I did. I was there. I would walking up so early to make sure that I was there for the pre-sale. <sighs> so sad. So, so sad. Because last time Paramore were in Cardiff was the first time they were ever there. And I missed them in Cardiff by four days. And then they done a show in Orlando. And I missed that by three days. Oh, my I, God. Yeah, I traveled to Cardiff four days um, after they'd done their show. And then I came back to Orlando three days after the last one. Oh, I was furious. So I she, bet. <laughs> oh, oh, but it's fine. She'll do them again when this is all done. Hopefully, it'll, it'll work out eventually. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> if they want to sing my entrance music, that's fine. I don't mind. I'd be open to it. <laughs> 
I know for me, it was especially when I was a teenager. Like, I was so heavily into that band. I went through this crazy emo phase. I had the haircut, like the bangs. So did you go through that exact same thing? Yeah. Yeah, and I had the really dark eyeliner, like super thick. Yeah. It's a good time. It was a good time. Because I look back on those photos now and I'm like, how did I do it? Like I was wearing skinny jeans and like 40 degree weather. Yeah. I'm just reminded of it every time I see my like my passport or my British driving license. I'm like, oh yeah, I looked like that at one point. Nice. Those were the days. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, I want to say thank you so, so much for taking the time for hopping on here. It was an absolute pleasure being able to speak with you. Oh no, thanks for having me on. It was real fun. Really, really fun. We got to talk about Paramore, so like, you know, what better with? <laughs> Everybody, this has been the incredible Tegan Knox. I'm the interview queen, Alicia Tude. Be sure to check out aliciatude.com for all exclusive interviews and features, and we will see you all next time. Bye, everyone. See ya.